we have this brain immune gut, right? And so you're talking about, obviously we talked a lot about the brain. We talked about leaky gut here, how it impacts the blood brain barrier. And you talked a lot about inflammation, which is an immune component. Let's tie all that together with like that immune system you've got in the middle of your big acronym. And so can you connect the dots there? Yeah, uh, this is where that that vagus nerve again uh, has a really big immunological component. So mm. the vagus nerve actually has um, connections to your spleen and your liver. And when you have good vagal tone and vagal outflow, it actually, through that vagus nerve pathway, inhibits macrophage activation in the spleen and the liver. And what that means is that it can dampen inflammation in those area, and that has a systemic effect. Okay, so so this is where if you have decreased vagus nerve output, right away you're going to have a more inflamed system because macrophages are these immune cells that are big eaters. They basically go eat up pathogens, but they can also eat up cellular debris. If the macrophages are overactive, too activating too much. Potentially, it can damage self tissue. You're going to just basically activate a lot of cytokines and create a lot of inflammatory uh, response. So, that's a mechanism for how the vagus nerve directly contribute to inflammation. Mm. Um, now, also from a brain perspective, this is really interesting. That you know, your left brain is typically your um, the, the part of the brain that kind of makes you you know, just like the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, every everything in the body has a gas pedal, brake pedal, right? So yeah. that's how we can achieve homeostasis. Your left brain typically is kind of seen as your go brain. It's more dopamine yeah, more driven. Gas. Yeah, makes you more like want to approach things and motivate it, want to go look for a mm -hmm. food and mate. While your right brain is more of your brake pedal, makes you kind of, whoa, let's pay attention to our environment. Is there bad guys? Is there something that's really bad for me? So, you know, that's a general description, okay? It can, yeah. it can be seen that way. Well, your left brain, it's a gas pedal, also tend to push your immune system. It, it tend to stimulate specifically T helper one immune response. And then the right brain tend to push the T helper two immune response. So T helper one is a part of the immune system that go kill things. Mm -hmm. T helper two is primarily the immune system that make antibodies. So sometimes we'll see people with a very left brain dominant or right brain weakness, having more of a more inflamed body because the, the T helper one response may be too over exuberant, causing more inflammation. On the other hand, if we see someone with a right brain activation and then left brain that's insufficient, it's all about balance, right? It's not yeah. like everybody's perfect. Some people just more of a right brain person and more of the mm -hmm. artist type. Some people more of the accountant type. But when it's too much, that's when it becomes a problem. So in the right brain active situation and left brain deficient situation, you might see someone with more asthma, and mm -hmm. allergies, which is more of a TH2 response. So okay. this is where the brain mm -hmm. hemispheres can contribute some of these, you know, uh, patterns that we see in people as far as immune system function. Yeah, interesting. And is there certain certain toxins that somebody might be exposed to that can push one of those systems more than another? Yeah. So in in the literature, definitely environmental toxins like BPA and, and these, uh, you know, environmental toxins they tend to promote a TH2 dominance. Okay. Yep. So toxins tend to have a TH2 promoting property. So then this is why it can cause someone to be more asthmatic, more allergic, right? Having more of these allergic type of sensitivity on the skin or in the lung or, or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so toxins can do that. And we also know not just toxins, but infections can also drive TH2 response. For example, pathogens that are too big for uh, engulfing, right? For phagocytosis. Yeah. Pathogens that are too big for phagocytosis are typically handled by the immune system with eosinophils mm. and mast cells with histamine. Yeah. And these mediators, because they basically spill enzymes on the bad guys that's too big to engulf to kind of bleach them to death, right? So then these eosinophils and, and mast cell responses are typically a TH2 response. Mm. So then, so then, so what, what would be a pathogen that's too big to engulf? Well, parasites. Yeah. So if you have parasites, you have mold, these things can drive, they're classic TH2 driv mm -hmm. drivers and so is environmental toxins. So, so this, these are the things that we're, we're looking for as a pattern. And if we see this person, yeah, asthma, allergy, always have some kind of, you know, sinus infection. And then they're always, uh, they also, this person may have more of a left brain dominance where they're very 
you know, uh, nitty gritty about little things or watch too much device electronics, you know, kids with ADHD and, and autism tend to be more left brain dominant. So that's yeah. why they love their electronic and they should be, we should be limiting electronic exposure for those kids with ADHD because they have a decreased right brain activity and too much left brain. So when I see an example here, autistic kid having allergies and asthma, mm. and then having like this autism left brain driven can pay attention. And the right brain also is bodily sensation. So they can't feel their body. They can't embody themselves. They also can't mm -hmm. read body language. That's all right brain deficit. So that's an example in that population of this left brain, right brain imbalance that's connected to an immune system problem. Right. Wow. Wow.